Let me introduce myself. I'm Julia Woni. I'm from the Netherlands. I'm ambassador of Derwent and I will give a small workshop with the graphite tin paint pen set. So um, let's start and I will flip my camera so you can see my work. And there's this. It's a life, still life, in my journal. And I sent you also a photo and a line drawing. So you can make your up your mind what kind of drawing you want to do. But let's start with how you can put a drawing on your paper. Um, for that, we need the photograph. Let this a little bit aside because later on we will use this. The photograph, how can you draw that? For example, you can use the grid system where you can put in your photo in and those lines will help you with drawing the still life. That's one way to get your drawing on the paper like this. That's one way. The other way is when you use a, cop a photocopy and we can transfer it. And what I'm using then is a graphite stick, also from the Derwent, a B2. You rub your photocopy in with the graphite. The excess you throw it away and you put it on a paper. And I only stick some tape on top of it so I can look if I'm doing it correctly. I already have done some. So with the ball pen, I was drawing the outline of the photograph. Why I'm using the ball pen is that you can see where I have been. You've seen I didn't do the, uh, the pot with plan yet. So let's start and transfer this. I'm going further with my outline here. No details yet, just the outline or maybe the inner line, just to get the frame of the drawing on my paper. So I think it's nice, but let me look. Yeah, you see, the plant is also included on the paper. When you're in this stage, you have the correct, let me see the picture here, the correct uh, proportions uh, on your paper. What I was explaining about the lines is that you can put this in your drawing, completely contouring the lines, but you also can make a little gap on the lines. That makes the drawing more interesting to watch. So also what's nice to know if you put a line down on your paper you can make several different kinds of lines. So be aware of that you can make a line from left to right but you can also left and pick it up. So you have a totally different points in your lines. So like this. I already have done that and I've done that on the nice paper of the Derwent. You have the light fast paper and the intense paper and for this subject I'm using the light fast paper because the surface of the paper is much much more uh, softer subtle than the intense paper who has more a little bit more structure. So I already have done the line drawing here so I will remove this one and I will put this down. Then I will show you how it works with the graphite tint. I will put 
the photograph next to the drawing so you can see what my reference is and I will show you the artwork I already made and what you can see I don't want to color it all in I want to play with the white of the paper so be aware of that don't color all the colors in but leave some little subtle white spots uh, on from your paper in uh, the drawing or in the painting so here we have the set What's nice of the set is that you have a water brush that comes along with the set. You can put water in it or you can use it as a just normal brush. You have a palette and you have your 12, 12 colors. What's nice too is that Derwent also has a new set with four new, let me show you, different sizes. Of water brush and let's get started with some colors um, I will take the middle one take some paper in your hand always nice when you do watercolors even with the graphite thing that you have something in your hand to take the excess of water And when you're right-handed, start on the left and go to your right. Normally I go from up till down, yeah, from uh, top till bottom, but uh, from backwards till the front. But let's start with the small parts and later on uh, put some uh, background to it. I will take the dark indigo and... That's this one. Put some in here. What's nice of the push buttons is that you can put some water into your pan. Then it dissolves a little bit more and you have very nice pigments. You see it's going very quickly. And then we can start here. Just put some Thing down and be aware of that you don't want to give it all color but leave some white spots open so and that's the most difficult thing when you do water coloring you put too much pigments and water on the surface and uh, it's nicer to have a playful form of giving color to your subject. The first layer. Of blue. What's important to know. If I'm now. Was giving color to the leaves. Uh, and my pot is still wet. Uh, the colors will run through each other so you have to be patient so don't put color next to each other immediately when it's two different kinds of colors so be aware of that so here the blue color and I want some extra pigment especially here in the zone where it's dark so I put some extra pigments in here and underneath the leaf a little bit, a bit here and here so I give a more contrast more depth with a clean brush I will fade it out like this and it's more much more interesting to watch And a little bit here on this side. Like this. I just explained when I would uh, color the leaves. 
sometimes it will go run through each other so I will skip the green and I will go to this blue one and I want to make a different one and you can see there is a different one now I will take the ocean blue so the ocean blue is this one if I'm correct no that's the steel blue I'm guessing this one yeah And I'm giving a little bit of dots in this framework of squares just to make it more interesting to paint. Give it all the same color. And here at the end and the bottom it's more darkened, so I put some more coloring in here. A little bit water. And be aware, just leave some white open, just to make it interesting. You see the paper is very nice. It's, it's very good with water. It's 300 gram, 100% cotton paper, so it's a very professional, good paper. Um, let's take some gray and there is a green gray like this one a nice thing you can do with the graphite tint is you can mix them so if you want to prefer a little bit more golden color you can mix the gray with the gold it's the rosette color not cold but it looks like gold and um, we can give behind a little bit much more like this I'm guessing sometimes it's just looking which color it's nicer or lighter or darker but be aware don't paint all the white away play around with the paper white And be aware, don't touch the blue, because then it will run through. So, yeah, the dark color I can put in here on top, because that's the inside of the pot, and it's darkened. And here it's lighter than there, and it has to be the other way around. So I'll take some two colors and put some dark colors in here as well. get more depth in the shade yeah it's going well let's do this one is almost the same color as the pot but maybe a little bit more brownish and that's the autumn brown and the rosette that I'm mixing now together put some that down take some nice water clean brush and play around with that color so the, those are the basic techniques of watercolor you can do what wet in wet or wet on dry it's now still wet on dry so just put color on a dry paper like this Sometimes you can um, enhance the, the drying method to use a uh, heat tool. Um, for now, the paper is very fulfilling with drying the paper, so sucking the water in. So it's not necessary to use a hair dryer. So we continue. Then I will take a little bit of gray. That's the graphite gray. And I put some, yeah, there was already blue there, so make it a mixture of the gray and the blue. And give here some color to these pots. And you see, don't put the paint everywhere. Play around with the white paper.
be aware of the light and the dark shades and and we can put something gray in here and i make a different stroke more from top to bottom so just to make it more interesting And what you already notice is that the black from the lines from the line maker does not dissolve with water so you can do your washing in your lines so i like that a lot so take a little bit of the same color i'm using on the left pot and put it a little bit underneath here set it down You're the artist, so you can take every color that you prefer. This is an inspirational photograph, I always say. It's an inspiration, and then you can do your own twist on it. Uh, let me see what we can do this is already drying so you can uh, put some extra uh, shadow on it onto it but you have to wait until this one is dry it will dissolve again it's not like the ink tens it's not water resistance after drying so it will uh, uh, it will dissolve again with water if you put another color on top of it so be aware of that it's like an ordinary or not an ordinary but a normal watercolor that means if you find something too dark you can make it wet and take it a little bit off so you can play around with it little bit blue but you have to be careful not to put too much blue in here because then it will be too much the same color as that one but just a little bit more color to give it more depth more interesting like this some shade already you can put some shade underneath there okay for the smaller parts i take uh, the smaller pencil or brush sorry with a very fine point you can see the difference there are three different sizes so the middle and now the smallest one and we do some green and we have the meadow coloring the meadow color is like a very nice greenish color with the graphite tint. It's a graphite combined with a pigment. It gives a very nice graphite sheen to it. And the same as with the pots, don't give everything color leave some white paper open I'll do that on purpose because that makes the drawing or the painting much interesting to look at then just fill up all those parts that you can give color color If you have some questions, you can ask them. I can answer him or the Durban team can answer for you, for me. So if you want some information, drop the question. So the other leaves. And you can play around with color. So you can um, darken the green by 
putting some blue and green together and you can make a shade color like here for example here is the darker green and in here and of course in here in the center put some green and this is more the technique of wet on wet that means I put some let me show you in the big leaf I can put some light color in here go to my dark color green put it in here and let's see what happens you know the water will take the pigments of the dark color and it flows in each other it's a very small spot but I'm guessing you get the meaning of it that's the wet on wet and that's a very nice subtle um, flowing of pigments the granulation that you get with the graphite tint it's really very beautiful and very special for the graphite tint Here I can show you again, put some white, uh, uh, wet color, take the dark color, so it's a mixture of the blue and the green and just put some dots in the center and let the water do the mixing for you. Does the pencil, no, um, the pencil does not create a broken line. I am doing that so um, it's more interesting to have a, a line that's more um, as a handwriting line if you know what I mean just subtle color even with light colors you can do it also with a light color just plain water and a little bit of green just play around with water techniques with your graphite tint again here a little bit of light and play around with the green and you can see what the pigments do with the water it's it's a lovely combination the graphite and the color Put some in here, get them together to get more depth in the plant. Later on, I will do some shed shades, shadows in the uh, in the pots and the plants and everything around. But first, I want to give everything a color. So we have done the the pots the plants some here maybe we go up there where the orchids are and let's start with the green in here oh i see i have to have more pigments in it so get some more pigments and put it down like this with a very fine point of the brush it's very nice because it's very flexible and you get a very nice line with it. And if you don't need the excess water, you don't have to push the button. If you don't, if you use the button like here, you can see you can have more control over water and it's not now, it's not necessary. So just don't push the button then. So like this. I put it down very nice green can you mix these paints in ordinary water paints of course you can do that Harry but the effect of the graphite tint will be less so I prefer to mix them between graphite and graphite tint but um, 
you can try it, it, it it's the same solution so you can do but you you will you will lose the the overall feeling of the graphite tint oh here i forgot almost this top of the orchid just a little greenish up there yeah it's going okay i'm thinking for the flowers for the orchids i want to leave them white because i want to give the background a color and the background will be a wet on wet that's later but um so i don't want to give the flowers a color but i will give the center of the flowers colors and if we go and watch and see the colors of the graphite tint i like the port and the unipo so maybe i will go for a mixture or some of only port or only unipo let me see but the leaves i want to leave white so this one is the port color and you see my palette is filled so i will take some off excess with off with paper easy to clean you see very nice take already some new paper you can get enough of the paper when you're doing watercolors i just meant let me see what harry means just mean to get additional colors in some areas. Of course, you can mix the paint. Oh, you can. Yeah, I know what you mean. You can uh, get some extra tones in the graphite tint with another watercolor. But um, what I already mentioned is that the graphite tint has an overall um, gray tone, grayish tones of the graphite. And that will get less when you put other paints without graphite tint in it. So I was mixing the port, maybe just the port, I like that one. Or maybe autumn brown, because that's almost like an orange one. Now for the orchid, I will use the port. And I will put something, maybe I will do this with water. So what I mean. Just put some water in those flowers and I make a little wet on wet. And then a very small tip, a really small tip of port in the center. Do you see what happened? It will flow in the water in the flower. So let me see if it's possible to show you again. Some water. Take a very little tip of paint and put it in the center of the flower here we go and it will flows flows away into the flower and that we will do with all the flowers so put a little bit of water don't do too much water just a little bit and put some color in the center What's the yellow bit? This one. This is the meadow and this is the russet. So those are the two colors. So the meadow and the russet. Same here. Just put a little bit of water. And some port in the middle. And I see I have too much water, so I will... What you can do is uh, clean your brush, take out of the excess water in the brush. And now your brush is like a sucking tool. Do you pronounce that in English? But you know what I mean. It will take up the excess water. And put some extra pigments in the middle of the flower. Here you can put some extra too. To give more contrast in the flower and just play around with it in those even in those little areas you have to play with color so 
Susie, what's the yellow in the palette? Yeah. Oh, this one. <laughs> That's the sponge. <laughs> Sorry, Susie. <laughs> That's the sponge. You can dry your clean, uh, your, your brush on it. But I rarely use it. But you can do it like this, but I prefer this one. It's just what I used to. So. A little bit of color in the center again. Did I get all the flowers? Oh, maybe here, those little nuts. Oops. And another one here. I will give every flower a little bit of port. Just put some extra in it in the center. Lovely orchids. So give some extra green in here. Maybe some extra green. So it's a second layer. So you can build up layer on layer with these graphite tints just as what you can do with an ordinary or with another watercolor or the ink tents the ink tents is also very vibrant colors okay let's do something on the table in here but more green yellow something in between give it here a little bit of color I, you see i think this is too small so i will skip to the bigger one and that's much easier because you can put much more pigments at once so that's why i change between those two different type of points that's why many people ask me why do you have to need several sizes of pencils or, or brushes i mean sorry um because sometimes it's easier to get a larger space with pigment color when you have a larger brush so that's why you have different sizes of brushes in your collection take a little bit of that port red just to put it in here it's it's a warm color but that's the first color i will put some blue cool color on top of it for the shades but i love the port mixing with the rosette it gives a very nice warm color So, normally you would give all color to the whole form, but I know that I want to put some color in here. So it would be nice if the end of this is white, like in the picture, you know? So be aware that you don't have to fill up all the form with color. Before I go to the background and to the table or where it's all standing on, I want to put some shade into uh, my painting and I will use a cold color, a blue purple one. I could use the indigo, but I already used it here. Put some extra dark in here, but I like the aubergine too because it's a when it's a cool color the cool color will go further away because we want to make depth in a two-dimensional uh paper and we want something to make it three-dimensional so we have to do all kinds of tricks to make it more give it more depth so that's why we doing that we put some um vases before each other so there is a layering on that and now we 
try to do the coloring depth and that's you can do with the aubergine is this one let me see if it's cool enough cold enough for the color or do i use the blue one no i will take the aubergine of course i can use my brush and add some water to it or i can take water from the pot just what you prefer and let me see when you want to see the shades in a photograph or in a landscape or whatever uh, just squeeze your eyes and look through your uh, lashes and then you can see much more where it's light and where it's dark so behind this one it's dark so I will put some color in here and I put it down and I will give it a go down there and then I will take away the white spots because the white spots will make it flat and we want to make it depth and round so now we are putting some shade in those pots even underneath those leaves just put a little and what I'm doing now is cleaning my brush no excess water and take it a little bit further like this so put it down and when it's wet I am washing it out like this some on here and here Put it in here give it all a little bit of shade on top of those the color port I already placed on here I can put some aubergine to it of course on top of the vase here where the leaf is making shades on the pot and of course here a little bit it gives more depth in the drawing or in the painting a little bit in here just be aware very less it's you know you can't take it away so you have to be careful where you put some shades in in here some lines with your brush you can see you don't need to give it all color but you can play around with it give some little lines to the fur just to make it interesting in here clean it with water do it like that on the side of the like this yeah maybe some uh, shade and coloring in those two leaves because I like those but these are a little bit flat so put some purple in here just some color lots of water and give it centered you know gives it more depth layer upon layer see some familiar faces hi Ida hi Carla Nadia Elisa thank you Emma many people nice to see how many are watching so let's go to the background 
and then I'm using the large one one centimeter white and let's make enough color before we starting to wet the paper so how are we doing that I will make a blue color ocean blue that's this one and what I'm doing now here is taking this color away put some water into my travel so it can dissolve a little bit put some water in here because I need a lot of color I want this color ocean blue nice do you see those graphite and those pigments I'm not sure if you can see it but I will go can you see it like this how those granulation is appearing because one of the pigments and the graphite has a different size and it will uh, it will dissolve differently that's why you get those granulations with the graphite tint so hopefully I made enough color that's always a little bit tricky put some extra in here clean my water brush and then we go make a wash and how are we doing that what we did was wet on dry technique now I want to try a wet on wet that means that I put some water in here on top of it and I want to go around the flowers and I have to be quickly I have to be very quickly because it's hot pressed paper it's 100% cotton so it will suck the paper very the water very into the paper so I have to be very quickly and then I take the color now you know why I have to prepare the water at forehand you know because we want to play with the color on the paper and let it flow in the already wet paper that is what I want to do want to show you that wet on wet and then you can see already the granulation happen and that is something you can't um, see what it will be look like at forehand but it's a, like something special you know it's an extra and it gives you much more interesting color than you see the graphite comes up I love that very nice granulation with the wet paper for the smaller spots like here I will go to the other brushes and then it will help to be quick because it has to be done in the same time that the background is still wet if some spot is already dried then you will have some lines in your work and you don't want to have one to have that in your backgrounds you want to have a very nice subtle background with very nice flowing of pigments and water be aware of the white of the flower so keep the color away from that hopefully you can see what happens with the granulation it's very beautiful I love it that's that's really something for the graphite tint you know
granulation of this even in here watch out it doesn't get too dark in here or here and then you have to stop with the background if you wanna uh, change this one or make it a little bit darker you will get spots you don't want that so you have to be happy with the result that we have what I've created now this is a this you have to practice you know now we have to do it around a flower but please practice this at forehand so a normal aquarelle paper watercolor paper try to get a very nice light till dark practice 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 that's what you need and lots of fun you know lots of fun by creating and being creative the only thing we have to do now is to put it all on a table and I prefer to use the autumn brown ah, maybe it's too red let's take the meadow rosette sorry this is the rosette Rosette in combination with the autumn brown and give it here color like this quick you see I don't give it color to all the all the way around give a little bit of space and give a little bit of shade and I use the aubergine and put it in here just a little bit clean water and help it flows into the water like this a little bit shade in here what you see the the pigments will go into the paper so you can darken it a little bit more use the indigo and where you wanted some more darkness to get more depth put some extra pigments in it like this fade it out again with a wet brush not too wet but a clean brush and give it some extra depth normally I do this on my vacations holidays and I can show you I have a little journal here where you can see those beautiful spots where I've been so like this is a smaller one you know where you can see all those little drawings with the line maker and these are done with the ink tents let me see I have another one like here I love to do that you know drawings and painting so this is a similar technique that I normally use in my journals so if you want to try out the graphite tints they're superb the line maker who's uh, water resistance light fast check it out lots of fun creating your own subjects uh, maybe see you next time bye bye